Gibson of the International Secret Police. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. After narrowly escaping death in a mysterious fire at sea, Speed, Clint, and Smiley land their big plane in Bermuda for a short layover. During this time, the fire-blackened baggage compartment is cleaned up, and Leeds, the mechanic, checks over the motors for possible trouble. Clint, suspecting that either Leeds or Davis, the navigator, is responsible for the fire, goes to the plane to watch over it. Meantime, Speed and Smiley dine at a cafe, planning to join Clint afterwards. At the cafe, Smiley is approached by a very pretty girl who asks him to aid her in getting her brother out of the cafe. In spite of Speed's warning, Smiley follows her to a room in the rear of the building. Speed says that he is going to get Clint, and Smiley, after going with Lota, the lady of mystery, discovers that the whole thing is a trap to get all three of them together and destroy them. We now find him trying to think his way out of the trouble. Lota is watching him. You appear to be thinking very hard, Mr. Preston. Are you wondering how to warn Barlow and the boy of the trap? Might be. But I'm really worrying about that little gun you're toting. A woman with a gun is mighty dangerous. I suppose you would like me to put it away. Mm, I'd feel considerable better. (laughs) Do not try to fool me, Mr. Preston. I have been warned about the secret police. I know you are most clever. Well, I wish I knew as much about you. Who are you working for? Oh, it is not mannerly to question a lady. Well, it ain't exactly mannerly to entertain your guests at the point of a gun, I might remind you. And to think I came in here to try and help you with your brother. A man will come here soon, but uh, he is not my brother. Why are you doing this, miss? Another question. Well, you're taking a mighty lot for granted after all. Supposing Clint doesn't come here after me. He warned me not to be taken in by any pretty girl. Maybe when Speed tells him I was, he'll get good and riled up and leave me alone. What then? Then we shall kill you and seek another way of luring your friends to a quiet place and destroying them. You're a beautiful woman. Beautiful, miss. Like a king cobra. The deadliest snake I know of. Do not move or I will shoot. Don't worry, I won't move. I won't give you the pleasure of shooting my carcass. But it'd do me a heap of good to see Clint snap the cuffs on those pretty wrists of yours. I saw a leopard taken that way once, chained and helpless, but snarling and hating to the very last. She was a pretty cat, too, but wicked. You are trying to make me angry. First you liken me to a snake and then to a leopard. But I am not like other women, Mr. Preston. I do not lose my head in anger so you will have a chance to get these gone and uh, perhaps escape. No, sir. Yes, Peter. Just one moment. You, Preston, do not move while I unlock the door. The gun will still be trained on you. Nice to have your undivided attention, miss. Well, I see you've got him. Oh, it was very easy. If Barlow is as easy to fool as this one, I cannot understand why he has lived so long. Shut up, Lota. Oh, you need not fear my tongue, Peter. This one has been trying to learn something from me ever since I brought him here. Yes, has he? <laughs> well, we'll soon answer all his questions. At least, he won't be asking any more. Now, look here, Peter, uh, whoever you are. I don't know what this is all about, but if you think you're going to get away with murdering us in the back room of a cafe, you're playing crazy. If we disappear, there'll be a big investigation. You know that. I know, and we've thought of everything. For your information, Preston, we can do away with you and Barlow very nicely back here. 
because the gun we're using has a silencer on it. Besides, by the time he arrives, the orchestra will be playing outside. No one will hear a thing. No one will ever know what happened. Why, you murdering rat, you'll pay for this. All right, we'll see. Are the others outside? Yes, stationed in the corridor. When Bolo and the boy arrive, I've instructed the manager to direct them back here. Our men will close in behind them once they're in the corridor, out of sight of the cafe crowd. You're going to be mighty disappointed when Clint doesn't show up. Don't worry. When the boy, this Pete Gibson, tells his uncle that you've agreed to help a lady in distress, <laughs> well, Barlow will come here all right. <laughs> you figured everything out, ain't you? You bet. And this time, Barlow won't get away. He'll never live to investigate the Atlantean syndicate. Atlantean Cindy. Peter, you warned me not to say anything. Don't you worry, Lothar. This blight will never live to tell what he knows. <laughs> I'll see to that, I will. I'll see to it. Clint, I thought I'd find you down here at the plane. Oh, hello, Speed. Uh, where's Smiley? That's why I came. He wouldn't leave that cafe. That was a girl. What? You don't want Leeds to hear this, do you? He can't if you talk low. He's too far away, and besides, he's working on one motor. Talk fast, Speed. What happened? An awful pretty girl came to our table just as we were getting ready to go. I tried to get Smiley away, but after she asked him to help her, I couldn't budge him. Oh, the darn fool. And after I warned him before he left the hotel. I know, but I couldn't do anything with him. The girl wanted him to help her get her brother out of some room at the cafe. Last I saw of him, he was heading there. I told him I'd bring you to talk some sense into him. That's the one thing we'll have to watch for in Smiley. He'll get himself and us into trouble over every pretty face we see on this trip. If we don't throw a good scare into him now. What are you going to do, Clint? Wait and see. I want to make a phone call before we leave here. Then we'll go right to the cafe. I'll give that southern Romeo a lesson he'll never forget. Believe me, I'll tell him a thing or two. There's the cafe over there, Clint. Hmm? Oh, yes, I see. Looks harmless enough from the outside. I suppose Smiley's still in there. Hope we haven't missed him. Yeah, so do I. What are you looking for, Clint? Hmm? Oh, nothing. Well, I'm ready now. Let's go in. Okay. But I'd sure like to know how you're going to teach Smiley a lesson. Wait and see. Oh, here's the door. You go in first. They'll recognize you. Okay. Here's where we sat over there. Oh, mm-hmm. Here comes the head waiter. You talk to him, see. You don't want to make it appear as if we're worried. Worried? You mean this might be a trap, Clint? I thought of that angle. Look out. Here he comes. Yes, gentlemen. You wish a table for two? No. I was here a little while ago and sat at that table over there with another fellow. You remember him? He was big, always smiling. Always. I recognize you now. Your friend is in the rear of the cafe. Go down that corridor to the last door, and you will find him within. Oh, that's swell. I was afraid maybe we'd missed him. Come on, Clint. I'm coming. I don't think this is a trap of any sort, Clint. The place is too big to stand for any dirty work. And look at all the people that are here. They couldn't get away with anything without attracting attention. Then why is that head waiter signaling with his handkerchief? Huh? And look at all those waiters standing around the corridor. Speed, we've walked into a trap, all right? Oh, golly. And we'd better turn around and walk out of it again before we get out of sight of the customers. And leave Smiley here? No. But we can get help from the English authorities here. It might be too late by that time. No, Speed. We've got to get Smiley as soon as possible. Get your gun ready. It's in my side pocket. Good. And don't betray your thoughts by any look or word. We've got to run that gauntlet of cutthroats as if we suspected nothing. Okay, Clint. All right, come on. Let's go out to the corridor. Meantime, let's talk as if we were thinking of nothing but getting Smiley away from some girl. Yeah. Well, this is the corridor the head waiter showed us. Yes. I'll bat Smiley's ears down for bringing us down here after him. I wanted to get some sleep before our takeoff, and instead I had to play chaperone for that Romeo. I know. I tried to talk him out of staying here, 
When he fell for that girl like a ton of bricks. The idea of helping her with her brother. Why can't he keep out of other people's business? Sure. If her brother had a fight with his dad, I don't see how Smiley could help anything by making him go home. Those fellas are closing in behind us, Clint. Now, lights in this corridor aren't brave. Now, lights in this corridor aren't very bright. Don't worry. We we'll start anything while we're out in the corridor. We we'll start anything while we're out in the corridor. Someone might come along and see them. I remember Smiley. Uh, he was going through training school with me. <laughs> he was always in love with some girl or another, even back in those days. I wondered if he ever learned anything. <laughs> he was plenty smart, though, and plenty tough when he has to be. How are we going to get out of here once we find Smiley? If we find him. We worry about that when the time comes. Is that the door up there, I wonder? The light isn't any too good back in here. Now, oh, come on, let's go. Looks like the end of the corridor, all right. But we better knock before we go busting in, just in case that isn't the right room. Golly, Clint, there must be five fellas in back of us. Yeah, don't pretend to notice them, Speed. Or they'll jump us here. We're far enough away from that main room now. This is worse than any fighting we've ever done. The backbone feels like it's crawling. I shouldn't have gotten you into this rat's nest. Heck, yes. I couldn't keep Smiley from getting into trouble. Maybe I can get him out of it. Yeah, I guess this is the right door, all right. Listen, Speed. Get your gun out when I knock on the door. And be ready to whirl and hold off those fellas behind us if they try to rush us. Can I do that now? Keep them back while you open the door? No. Once you turn, you'll have to start shooting. And I don't want that, unless it's absolutely necessary. It's too dark back here. They'd get us before we could get them. But if they do start shooting, or you hear a knife whistle by, drop to the floor. Okay. I'm all ready for him. Good. Now, I'll knock. Smiley! Smiley Preston! Are you in there? Why doesn't he answer? I don't know. Smiley! Are you there? Clint, get out of here! It's a trap! Oh. Hey, Smiley! They got Smiley! Come on, Clint! Let's go after Please, him! Please, look out! Behind you! Hey! 